No, no, it's not. I mean, yeah, it, it no. <sighs> yeah. Headed to Versailles today, and I, to be, I, I hate Versailles. I don't, I don't hate Versailles. I hate going to Versailles, and maybe that's because I've spent like I spent like a whole summer going out to Versailles, you know, leading bike tours, and it's just, it's always an all day, very exhausting event. So that's what's stuck in my mind. And th today is a day to try and see if I can maybe reclaim Versailles in my mind. We'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm just trying to be honest up front. It, it, I'm pretty biased going into this. Eva and Alina are gonna be shooting a bunch of dresses out there today, including two wedding dresses, I think. So it's a perfect excuse to go out and uh, film for the Paris in My Pocket video that I've been working on this week. Is Paris worth it part two? You know, a bunch of the major sites that I missed last time, and I'm still gonna miss more, I'm sure, so maybe there'll probably be a part three as we go. But Versailles, yeah, that fits into that pretty well. So, and they've never been. So we'll see how this goes. Of course, with all the photo shooting going on, I, let's, uh, I don't have time to talk right now. We gotta get this guy to his babysitter because I don't think he's gonna be allowed in the palace. So we're just gonna go, hey, you want you want your food? Okay, take it. He's been waiting for his breakfast. He's a very good boy. Okay, when he's done eating, we're gonna go to the babysitter and then we have to go to the palace of Versailles. Let's go. He's your problem now. <laughs> This is a recap. So this is like a corner spot right around the corner from the Eiffel Tower. They just paid for two crappy coffees and one croissant, they paid 20 euros. 20 euros. So just as a reminder, if it's got a red awning and it's anywhere near a touristy location, it's probably a trap. Watch out. That's just a plug to grab my guide or, you know, get Mapster access if you're a patron from the $10 level and up. Find, you know, good coffee. Another five minute walk away. That'll cost you like a third of the price of a tourist trap like that. Anyways, let's go to Versailles. Ta -da! One for you. One for you. Four for me. Just a reminder, your regular metro ticket won't get you out to Versailles. It's outside the zone that works, so you need to make sure you buy an extra ticket or take the risk of getting a 50 euro fine up to you. I have caught that fine once before. And away we go. We have a 23 minute wait to get out there. You can tell I'm thrilled about this. The main problem is that I, I might have had a little more coffee than opportunities to, you know, process that coffee than I would have otherwise liked. Anyways, we're on our way, eventually. There's a strike. Versailles is very prone to strikes. This is one of the main issues between the trains getting out there. Like during the summer, RERC in the center of Paris gets shut down completely, so which it makes no sense because it's during tourist season. Like, why are you doing this every tourist season? So there's that. And then uh, the castle itself goes on strike. Kind of at random, like you get some warning, but like if you don't know, if you're not paying attention, you may not know before you go. So it's something to look into before you go. Anyways, hopefully we're gonna make it. We waited a long time. It's still a walk to go when we get there. Like I'm hoping that we're gonna make it to the castle and actually get in, but find out. Not too bad. It's 12.35. Our entrance is for 1.30, and my hope is that there's not a massive line, so we'll see what we find ourselves with on the other side. I was gonna say there is a toilet inside the train station, but um, I mean, technically there's still a toilet. 
We'll go to McDonald's across the street. <laughs> Another update. We used to say you didn't need your metro ticket to get out on the other side. Because they didn't, these machines used to just let you out, but they don't anymore. So definitely hold on to your uh, RER ticket until you get all the way out and then you can throw it away. Do you see it? Wow. How do you feel about this line situation? Uh oh, I just want to sit down here for you guys. <laughs> Yes, yeah, I mean, I've seen longer, you know, sometimes it actually stretches all the way up the street down behind us, so it so. could be worse. So we, we have tickets, so we're going to entrance A, it looks like. Either we're in that line, which is going all the way around to A, or this line going to, or this line going to A. It's good that I'm out here trying to figure this out on my own, I suppose, but yeesh. So we, we were in this line up there, but now we're curved back over here. But it does seem to be moving. Is it the right line? We don't know. We'll find out. We think we're finally in the right line. Yeah. If you didn't buy your tickets ahead of time, this is the line you're going to end up in. I highly recommend you buy your tickets in advance. You should definitely buy your tickets in advance. So at least you get into somewhat of a shorter line. Whether or not skip the line is worth it, I'm not sure. This is chaos. However, we do seem to be moving. Yeah. Definitely seems to be moving. I'm gonna try and remain chill and neutral for the rest of the experience. Just to let you know if I do think it was worth it. Was the delayed train worth it? Granted, that was a strike. It's not any fault of Versailles, per se. It's waiting in line and the ultimate chaos of French queuing worth it. I'm, we're gonna just take this in stride. I'll reserve judgment, let's find out. Hey, we, we found the sign that tells us what time this line is for at the base of the building. <laughs> it only took, we're, only, we're only getting in like 20 minutes later than our ticketed time, so, but we're also at the front of the line. That helps. We'll see if uh, Ava can get through security with her bag full of wedding dresses or not. So unsurprisingly, security wanted to check her bag as soon as she came through, so I think they, they went with him. I think they're gonna change into one of the dresses. I have no idea how she's gonna manage that, but if you, you can't come in with a suitcase, and generally if you come in and you have items in your bag, like a bottle opener you forgot to take out, picnic knife, something like that, they'll actually check it for you, and then you can collect it on the back side. So you don't wanna stress too much. If you forget something, they'll take it, they'll put it away, they give you a ticket, and then, at the exit is where you go to return that ticket and grab it. So just make sure you don't go all the way out before you get it back. But you should see the signs. If we see the signs, I'll point them out. Normally, this is where you get the baggage, but they've been blocked out the whole time. You got your bag back. I found this big red bench to wait on. So we'll see how it goes. I'm trying to maintain a really open, positive attitude about this experience, you know? But all the way through security, at least. Fresh start. We're through security. Let's see what the rest of the palace is like. <laughs> The chapel's not even open today. Wait, what? Listen, I understand that in a way you probably have to come out here, right? You gotta see it once in your life. I'm trying to keep an open mind about this because it is, I mean, it's cool. In a lot of ways, it's unique. But it's also not. It's like the peak of this era in so many ways and was so instrumental in influencing so many places in the world. And, but it, it stole its influences from a number, I mean literally stole if you look into the history, it stole its influences from a lot of interesting smaller places around here that you can go see. It is overwhelming for the crowds, the price, the amount of time that it takes, the effort that goes into it. I can't bring myself to enjoy this, but I'm, I'm gonna keep trying. I'm, I'm keeping it open. I'm not, I'm, it's hard. I'm trying to keep it open mind. So this is kind of fun. Louis XV was, as we call him, the fun king in uh, tour guide parlance. But Louis XV, uh, he, had a, he had a good time. He partied a lot. He had like over 50 kids as far as we know. And there's a running joke that literally everybody in France is related to Louis XV because he had so many kids. So that could be kind of interesting if you come and see that. It was rediscovered in like a flea market. There's a woman that works here that saw it in a flea market for a small amount of money and was able to reclaim it. Because a lot of the stuff that was in Versailles during its heyday, the furniture, the gold, all of that stuff, was actually taken during the revolution and sold off. Like stolen, sold off. 
some of it, I'm sure, for personal gains, some of it to fuel the revolution. But they lost a lot of original stuff, so most of the stuff in this place is actually a replica anyways. Another reason to enjoy it, because none of it's real. <laughs> it's just here to glorify, you know, monarchy, empire, all the things that we love and hold dear. There's some cool stuff in here that I've never seen before. Like there's definitely some new art that's interesting, at least new to me, like this section. There's a lot of history here, but I also just, but I can't get past really right now. It's just how much it just like glorifies the monarchy. And it seems weird to be investing so much time and effort in keeping something alive that was pretty actively put out of commission. Just all about hunting and war and conquest and Stuff that I thought was cool when I was like 15, but stuff that now I'm like, yeah, I, I can, can leave the violence out of things. I mean, if you've seen mirrors before, these might not impress you because, you know, they're old. From when mirrors were a magical technology, and it was only really the Venetians that knew how to do it. I'm pretty sure it was the Venetians, and I'm pretty sure they gave away a state secret when they made these mirrors, and I think a lot of them got poisoned for it. I'm, I'm a little bit sketchy on the details today, but, you know. Like I said, lots of good stories. Still, <laughs> maybe I just maybe I just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Let's all take this with a grain of salt. Not to be a total sourpuss about this, we're in a ballroom, the Hercules room. It is cool, it is really always cool going through any historical monument, museum, whatever, to put yourself in the shoes of whoever must have been in here. Like who stood in this corner, like having a drink, avoiding going out on the dance floor, who was looking to pick a partner and all that. Like it is cool. So for that, yeah, it's fun. Uh, this stuff is, is fun. I don't mean to be a total Debbie Downer. I just, I never really enjoy myself out here in Versailles, and I'd be lying to you to say that I did. I enjoy having picnics out on the canal. I enjoy the market. If I can, if I can never, I just, I, ah. Doesn't mean that there's not some impressive stuff to see here, though. I mean, again, once in a lifetime. Check it out. We are in fast forward, and we are one hour in here, and we still have We're like not a lot to see. <laughs> yep. How do you feel about your time here? To be honest, I don't know. I was a little disappointed. I have seen much more serious palaces, like ghosts and palaces in the ground. Yeah. But okay, for one day, it's worth it if you have time. Not so impressed. No. All right, worth it or not, because, you know, like I said, it is worth it once in your life. I think the reason that I'm struggling with this, particularly today, the reason it's kind of itching, under the skin is because it's just a little bit too real like this is exactly what the situation we're in now if you look historically at where the french were at this period like their government their kings were spending lavishly on themselves and their cronies and then dumping tons of money into ill-fated wars and just a whole bunch of really bad decisions that ultimately led to a place where their citizens were starving and it just feels a little bit too much like what's going on in the world around us now as far as like the, the gap that's opening between the super rich and the rest of us. The fact that, you know, people are struggling just to make ends meet while the billionaires that we see all on the news are buying, you know, super yachts and rocket ships. And gee, I don't know, maybe it's just a little bit frustrating to be surrounded by a very physical manifestation of the exact same malady that happens to be afflicting us today. I don't usually get too political in my vlogs, as you know. I don't know that that's all that political though because I feel like the majority of us, yeah, not really living at this level. I don't know, it's just bothering me today. Just like, yeah, okay, cool. I think I hated coming out here so much because I had to come out here for work a bunch. So I've just been out here a lot and it's lost a lot of the luster, but it never really struck me in quite the same way as so many other interesting uh, architectural feats and historical locations have because it's just so artificial. Like this is somebody's prove to the world how rich I am estate and it literally ruined the country. I just don't, I don't know, it's just, it just really eating at me. I don't really have ex exactly, I don't have exact answers, but yeah, Versailles, I hate this place. I honestly, like, you couldn't, yeah, I, I really hope I never come back out here. I might come back out here for like the dance party once, just cause that sounds like a crazy experience. And I'm open to having that experience, but just coming out here, like, ugh, man, I'm not gonna lie to you. Ugh, gosh.
I swear I'm not just being crotchety. Maybe like 10% I might. There's a percentage of crotchety in there, so make sure, grain of salt with this, but ugh. I'm happy never to come back out here.